So the country is officially on lockdown. This gives people more of the most valuable resource they have in their life, which is their time. Most of us are pretty busy day to day. I think especially in America, we're a pretty fast paced culture. This is forcing us to slow down. And um, one of the things that I've heard is people recommend that people should like take up a hobby, you know, do something that you've been putting off because you're just too tired or didn't have the time for. And so what I'm gonna share with y'all is the hobby I've picked up, which is the art of being a bowyer. That's right, making bow and arrows out of wood. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the process of how I turn um, ordinary pieces of wood into, in my opinion, pretty cool works of art. And that is bows. This one here, we got a piece of bamboo backing glued to this red oak belly and then birchwood handle. And uh, I'll show you how we turn that stick into something that can shoot arrows. Hope you guys dig it. Um, it's something that I've really gotten into and I recommend all y'all dig into some hobbies you've been putting off to. Much love, hope you enjoy. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is get a board. And you can't just use any board. In order to make it into a bow, it needs to be able to bend and be strong. And you go to Home Depot and you can get yourself a one by two by like six feet. And you're gonna look for grain is running the length of the entire board. Okay, no running off the sides and whatnot. And uh, you wanna pick a hardwood, this one here is red oak. For this bow, we're going to be using birch. And here you can see that grain not running the length of it. And since uh, birch is a bit of a softer wood, not super recommended for bow making, we're gonna strengthen it by adding a backing. And that is going to be a bamboo. Here we have our piece of bamboo backing. This is a six foot strip, which is quite thin, maybe like a quarter inch. And the first step is gonna to be to sand down all of these nodes in order to make this piece perfectly flat. And we're gonna glue this entire six foot length piece of bamboo to the six foot piece of birch. And in order to sand it down, I'm gonna use a belt tender. We're gonna try and get this thing as flat as possible the entire length of the board. sand those down flat so we get a nice even gluing surface the entire way across the board. So if we try to glue it as is, you're gonna have this big gap in the middle and the two pieces of wood would separate. So now I'm gonna spend probably like a solid hour or so getting this thing as flat as I possibly can. And um, you might think this is kind of like boring, but um, I've found this to be almost like meditation relaxation. And so I have a very simple goal, right? I'm gonna get a piece of wood real flat. Well, think of like the last time you spent an hour just doing something so simple, and I can find myself kind of getting lost in the process. So uh, yeah, pick a hobby you enjoy. I found myself really falling for um, falling for this one. Teach their own.
here we go. We got one flat piece of bamboo. So one of the things I've learned is uh, some patience, but also to let go when things don't go right. So after all that time spent flattening this, um, something that didn't look apparent, you know, when the board was thicker was that in the middle of here, there was a crack. And so this piece is no good for what I wanted to use it for. C'est la vie. <laughs> I really learned to let go of stuff is when I've put, I don't know, 20, 30 hours into making this here maple bow. This was uh, the third bow that I made and put many hours into it. And you start the tillering process, which is where you start to make the bow bend. And somewhere along the line, you might encounter a little problem like this. <laughs> and that is the bow exploding. You start bending this thing and it's gonna stress how good of a piece of wood did you pick? So when that crack in the bamboo looks like, oh, maybe you could cut around it or just not use it, um, in order to prevent, you know, more heartbreak down the road, sometimes you gotta just cut your losses and move on or, yeah, I'd say this is probably like the eighth or ninth bow that I've made and the first three all broke. <laughs> the first one, man, I did it all by hand, 60 hours, boom, snapped in half. But here we go, getting better, um, that's how you, you uh, learn is by making mistakes, right? It doesn't always go right. But now I feel like I've gotten pretty good at this. Okay, next step in the process is the glue up. We're gonna be gluing the bamboo backing to the piece of wood. Here's another bow backing. Uh, this is just fiberglass. So it's like fiberglass drywall tape and it's glued down the entire length of this one. But um, I don't like the way it looks. I like kind of the more natural idea of having it all be piece of wood, so um, we're going to be gluing this piece of bamboo to this piece of birch. We're going to run glue all the way down along it. We're going to have to clamp it about every inch or so so that we don't get any gaps. We need this thing to be perfectly flat, and so we're going to be using some clamps and some bicycle inner tube pieces of rubber to uh, wrap this sucker and try and get it as glued up as we can. So I've picked this side to be the glue up side. First thing we're gonna do is rough up the entire length of this so that we get uh, some better surface for the glue to adhere to. Right now it's like that perfectly smooth finish from uh, the factory. So we're gonna rough it up with some sandpaper and a file. Wood is a porous surface, so what you're going to want to do is get a coating of glue all the way down each of the two pieces of wood, and you're going to let it dry for a minute or so, because some of this glue is going to soak down into the fibers of the wood, and that would leave a spot with no glue on it when you're clamping it. So first, get glue all over each of the two surfaces that are gonna be glued. This is the same process for gluing the handles on, which will be coming up next. But I'd say this is like the hardest process because it takes the longest. Just getting the two pieces prepped to become one. And we still gotta cut into it in the shape of a bow, glue the 
handles, risers. Uh, this bamboo adds tons of strength to the wood. On the back of the bell, it's going to receive the most amount of uh, tension forces, which is much harder for wood to endure. And bamboo is great at that. On the belly, which is this piece of beech hardwood, you'll get compressive forces. So as this thing compresses on the inside, the belly, that will be the beech wood, and on the outside, the tension, that will be the bamboo. And each wood was kind of selected for that purpose. So uh, these are a bunch of slats that are used for like people making furniture or something. Um, I've heard of other people online that use bamboo flooring and they cut it into sections, but you basically just need whole long strips of bamboo, all one piece. You need it to be flat, you need it to be relatively thin. started doing it I was like there's no way boom snapped a piece of wood boom snapped a piece of wood boom snapped a piece of wood and these pieces of wood I've like uh, been shaving down my hand for 20 40 hours in one moment it breaks and what do you do you start again <laughs> the first bow I made was uh, this winter out of the cabin I thought, you know, if I'm gonna be living in this off-grid cabin for months of frozen, you know, sub 30 degree temperatures, all the way down to below zero or freezing, I need some hobbies I'm gonna be doing inside. And so woodworking is one of those things I've always wanted to do in those sort of fascinated by as a kid. It's like when you have the time to do it. Well, when it's freezing outside, literally, on end and it's only light outside for like four hours a day you got time inside to be doing woodworking or reading a book or making a podcast or whatever it is you got to keep your mind and body occupied for like basically months of isolation is what i'm looking forward to end up doing at the cabin so right now the nation's on quarantine you got time to do stuff like this Make art, do a hobby, play video games, read books, listen to music, expand your mind, work out, exercise, 
Yeah, we can't go to the gym, but there's tons of stuff you can do with no weights and indoors. Now I'll just do a bunch of push-ups and sit-ups, jumping jacks, squats. You can get a pretty darn good workout just like that. For me right now, it is going to go here and make some little... And I think we're about ready to put these pieces of wood together. Now we got the two pieces of wood together. We need to clamp damn near every inch of this. And so I'm gonna try and use these pieces of rubber. Here's what we're trying to avoid. Like right there, you're gonna see a gap. And we're gonna try to fill that gap with a clamp. Squeezing out the wood. So we got a small gap here. Notice that's where there's no clamp of rubber. And as we apply pressure, should see that get all taken up. And this is why we need nice even clamps the whole way down, like what that rubber provides. And there we have it. <laughs> Clamped a six foot long piece of wood to another six foot long piece of wood. Cool stuff, right? <laughs> and a massive success. You get nice glue all over the place. And then you get fun times when it's all dried and you get to pick it off your skin, right? <laughs>